Well, it's finally happened. I missed a week. But that just means that we have to cram two weeks worth of news in one video. There's a new web progress report. This one covers how Godot interfaces with JavaScript. For those who don't know, JavaScript is the programming language that is used to implement custom functionality on web pages. And depending on what you are building with Godot, it may be necessary to call upon a JavaScript library or to access a browser feature that is not directly exposed by Godot. Currently, you can run JavaScript using the javascript.eval function, but that is both cumbersome to use and potentially a security concern. So instead, a new class has been implemented called JavaScript Object. The JavaScript object wraps around native JavaScript objects and allows you to call JavaScript methods and retrieve object properties. It's designed such that you can interact with the JavaScript object as if they were native Godot objects. Base types like ints, floats, strings, and booleans are automatically converted, although floats might lose precision when first converted from JavaScript to Godot. More complex data structures like arrays or functions are treated as JavaScript objects themselves. You can also call Godot functions from JavaScript using callbacks. The OpenXR plugin for Godot 3.3 has officially been released. OpenXR is a royalty-free, open standard that provides a high-performance API between applications and VR devices. Basically, if your game supports OpenXR, it will work with all major VR headsets. And the Godot OpenXR plugin makes that process a whole lot easier. The plugin has been tested on Linux with Steam and Monado OpenXR runtimes, and on Windows with both Steam and Oculus OpenXR runtimes. Windows Mixed Reality headsets are currently only supported through Steam VR, as WMR natively only supports Direct X game engines. Android and native Oculus Quest support is coming in a future update. So this plugin is here now for Godot version 3.3, but additional VR improvements are also coming to Godot 4.0. One major feature coming is multi-view support or stereoscopic rendering. Multi-view allows rendering of the images for both eyes simultaneously, removing a lot of overhead compared to rendering the two images in sequence as Godot 3 did. Further improvements are also coming to Mobile Renderer. Mobile GPUs work very differently from their desktop counterparts. So specific optimizations like subpasses are being done to improve mobile performance. Valve has officially announced their new handheld gaming console. They are calling it the Steam Deck, and as you can see, it's absolutely massive. It features a 7-inch diagonal 1280 x 800 LCD touchscreen. That's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Interesting choice. They describe the screen as optically bonded for enhanced readability. It has a refresh rate of 60 Hz. Just for comparison, that's almost the same specs as the new Nintendo Switch OLED. The controller input seems standard to what you would expect from a modern controller. However, in addition to two analog sticks, it also comes with two trackpads one on each side. It seems like Valve has not abandoned the trackpad on a controller idea that they had with the original Steam controller. The Steam Deck has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity with support for controllers, accessories, and audio, as well as a 3.5mm stereo headset jack. It weighs approximately 669 grams or 23.5 ounces. It has a micro SD slot for more storage, and with a dock it can connect to an external display using DisplayPort 1.4 or HDMI 2.0. Valve claims you simply log into your Steam account and are able to play any game in your Steam library, including the AAA titles. Prices start at $400 for the 64GB model. And for game developers, the Steam Deck runs SteamOS 3.0, which means it's compatible with Godot, and other games should be compatible thanks to Proton. You can learn more about testing your game on the deck or request a developer kit by visiting the Steamworks site. You can reserve your Steam Deck starting July 16th. Units will start shipping in December 2021. This next bit of news was of particular interest to me since I use this software every day. The audio software Audacity came under heat recently. The owner of Audacity is now a private company called Muse Group. They announced that they would be moving Audacity away from its current open source GPL v2 license. They also announced that they would start collecting telemetry data to help improve the app, as well as data necessary for law enforcement, litigation, and authorities requests. Now, software collecting telemetry data is pretty common in all major software, including Mozilla's Firefox but some users expressed concern over the vagueness of that last part. Juan, the lead developer of Godot, remarked on the drama saying that Godot is owned by a non-profit, so something like this could never happen to Godot. 
This next story isn't specific to Godot, but I think most game developers would find it interesting. Indie publisher Whitethorn Games shared the revenue breakdown of their company's games. It's a surprise to no one that the Nintendo Switch is by far the best platform for indie games. What is surprising, however, is that less than 3% of their sales are on the PlayStation platform. And it's not for lack of trying. They say that PlayStation does not provide marketing, analytics, or CPM tools to developers, and it takes months to receive responses from their rep even though they have published multiple games on that platform. This kind of data is very useful for indie developers as it can reveal what avenues are and are not worth pursuing. And now is the part of the show where we talk about some cool projects made with the Godot engine. Speedy Gonzalez is an easy custom software mouse cursor add-on for Godot. It allows you to define a custom mouse cursor from a PNG file. Ego Venture is a first-person, point-and-click adventure framework for the Godot engine. GitHub Integration is an add-on that allows you to push and pull your GitHub repositories directly from the Godot editor. The author originally built it to speed up his workflow during game jams. Godot Exporter is a tool to help you export your project to all platforms with a single command. Multi-Run is an add-on that allows you to start multiple game instances at once. The main purpose for this was to speed up multiplayer game development. Godot Touch Input Manager detects when a touch input occurs and feeds it to the Godot built-in touch input event system. This should make it easier to build mobile applications. Self-driving RL Car Godot is a project that uses reinforcement learning, neuroevolution of augmenting topologies, to train a car agent to successfully drive around a track. The car uses Raycast to see its environment, and the AI controls the car using standard gas and steering wheel inputs. The training algorithm itself is implemented in Python, and uses a TCP socket connection to connect to Godot. This means you can use the pre-existing machine learning Python libraries such as PyTorch or TensorFlow. Burstect The Hidden is a survival horror PS1-style first-person game with cosmic horror elements set in the woods near Bariloche, Argentina. A Handsome Story is a single-player platformer in which the player controls left hand. Helms of Fury is an action roguelike using procedural generation, with a focus on collecting items that become your abilities, a deep progression system with lots of upgrades, and tons of replayability. Food Frenzy is a mobile game made with the Godot engine. The Four Color Theorem is a chill, mathematics-inspired puzzle game wherein you must fill in maps with limited pools of four colors, all while being serenaded with relaxing jazz. GD Sim is a realistic driving simulator with a powertrain, suspension, and tire simulation written in GD Script. Drive around a moderately sized sandbox-like map in a free session race against the CPUs, or race against a friend in two-player split-screen. By the way, if you haven't already, go follow me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash codingkaiju. I mostly livestream game development. If you just want something chill to put on in the background, come drop by and say hi. That's all for you this week. Like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.